Yeah, it's a therapy that's been known for 70 years. It was actually its 70th anniversary of the first treatment of a patient with boron neutron capture therapy. The first treatment happened in 1951, but the actual technology had been suggested in the 1930s. There's a British physicist called, um, oh, no, sorry, an American physicist called Gordon Locker, who, after the discovery of the neutron, realized that if you could actually put one of the isotopes of boron into tumor cells, namely boron-10, and bombard that tumor with neutrons, there'd be a very quick fission reaction where the boron would absorb a neutron into its nucleus, and a very quick fusion reaction, and then that fusion reaction would be followed very quickly by a fission reaction where the nucleus would fall apart in a kind of a mini atomic bomb inside the cell, and in that fission reaction are released an alpha particle, which is essentially a helium nucleus and a lithium ion. And that alpha particle has got a very high energy, but a very short path length. So it releases all of that energy over about nine microns. And if you think about the size of a tumor cell, average size of a tumor cell would be 10 to 20 microns. So all of that energy is released inside the tumor cell. And um, it causes uh, double-stranded DNA breaks, which can't be repaired. So if you're able to get that boron into those tumor cells and bombard them with neutrons, you essentially can kill them from the inside out. And that was the methodology that Gordon Locker proposed back in 1936. And then the first treatment was carried out at the Brookhaven National Laboratory in the United States in 1951. And that was specifically for treating glioblastoma. As you know, glioblastoma is a very difficult disease to treat. Even the primary tumors are difficult to remove. They've got a very aggressive nature. They recur very frequently. So patients at the Brookhaven National Laboratory were treated with a boron-containing compound, and these were very simple boron-containing compounds, probably something as simple as boric acid. That boric acid gets into the tumor, and then, of course, you bombard the tumor with neutrons. In this case, neutrons from the nuclear reactor. That's what is special about Brookhaven National Laboratory, is that it has research nuclear reactors, and these can be used for boron neutron capture therapy. There are quite a few patients treated there, and following on quite quickly from that, other patients were treated at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, a professor there called, a surgeon there called Professor William Sweet um, started that pioneering work. But unfortunately, although the tumors did respond well to the treatment, the treatment also caused some unwanted uh, side effects, particularly some damage to healthy brain tissue. As I mentioned, these were quite simple boron-containing compounds. They had no targeting capability. So they went into healthy cells just as easily as they went into tumor cells. So the healthy cell damage that was caused by boron neutron capture therapy was unacceptable. So quite a lot of that research back in the 1950s and 60s stopped. New compounds were developed with better targeting capability. One in particular called boron phenylalanine, another called BSH, it stands for sodium borocaptate. So they did try some other experiments in the early 90s in the US, but these were also not that successful simply because these compounds are not very highly targeted. You've probably heard of antibody-based targeting. That's a very exquisite type of targeting. These compounds have got what we call passive targeting rather than active targeting. So even in the 90s with some advances in the compounds that were being used, the un wanted side effects were still unacceptable. So essentially, in the United States at least, boron neutron capture therapy research ceased about that point and it hasn't really started again since then. What we're doing here, I'm based in Santa Monica in the USA, is that we're trying to revive an interest in boron neutron capture therapy simply because we now have far more advanced drugs and better neutron sources. The neutron sources used in the early experiments, if you remember, were from nuclear reactors. 
we've developed an accelerator-based neutron source which comes with a far cleaner spectrum of radiation and also neutrons are being generated at the optimum energy for boron neutron capture therapy. That's not possible with a nuclear reactor whereby you get quite a broad spectrum of different types of radiation including gamma rays, fast neutrons, epithermal neutrons and neutrons but with a modern accelerator-based source, we think those improvements will result in improved outcomes for BNCT. And that's why we're trying to develop both drugs and establish hospital installations for our accelerator.